A warning about a COVID complication in kids, the warning signs to keep an eye out for. And lawmakers working to help Americans with another relief check. How soon that could happen. Plus, you could soon be getting a mask in the mail without paying a cent. 12 at 12 starts right now. 12 minutes, no commercials. We're on TV and on the go on the 12 News app, website, and YouTube. Hello there, it's Trisha. Well, it's finally Friday, ready or not, and it's shaping up to be a beautiful weekend weather-wise. I think we're all ready for this. Crystal is here now with your weekend weather 411. No matter the team you're rooting for this Super Bowl, I think we're all going to be rooting for our weather. If you have grilled duty, well, you're going to be flipping those burgers and dogs under sunny skies, light winds. I'm giving you the green spatula every single hour. Lunchtime, 68 degrees. 73 by 3 o'clock and 71 at dinner time in the valley. I also have the greatest weather to go with the greatest show on grass. It's gonna be a little chilly for your tea time temp, but how quickly you are going to lose the layers as those temperatures warm up into the low 70s each afternoon for your final score. Skies chock full of sunshine. Hitting the road with the family. I've got more sunshine that you're going to be running into here with a breeze in our mountain regions today. Winds will simmer down over the weekend and we're also hitting the gas in terms of those high temperatures Saturday and Sunday. That nice little warm up is going to land you in above average territory across Arizona. Don't forget to stuff the tissues and the meds in the pockets as you head out the door because our pollen count has gotten boosted up into that moderate range. Juniper is the primary pollen that's causing problem right now and it's going to continue to drive your allergies crazy through next week. Awesome. That word just seems to keep coming up when describing our weather lately. We've got a straight shot of 70s here for you. Get outside. Enjoy this weekend. Next week we'll mix in some clouds with the sun, but it's going to be no harm, no foul. We're keeping it dry. Loving these temperatures. Crystal, thank you. Breaking news this noon, actor Christopher Plummer died today at his Connecticut home. One, he won over the hearts as Captain Von Trapp in The Sound of Music, one of my favorites, and has been a Hollywood staple for the past 75 years. He was an Oscar winner and a two-time Tony winner. His longtime agent says he died peacefully with his beloved wife of 53 years by his side. He was 91 years old. Wow. Turning now to the latest numbers on COVID-19 in Arizona. This morning, the Department of Health Services is reporting 3,826 new cases and 196 new deaths. Now, if you live in Coconino County, listen up. The county just opened up 200 additional vaccination appointments for next week. You can register online right now. President Joe Biden's $1.9 billion COVID relief bill is one step closer to becoming law. The Senate passing a budget resolution early this morning on party lines 51 to 50 with Vice President Kamala Harris breaking the tie. That happened after hours of debate and voting on amendments that took the session into the overnight hours. Since the Senate revised the budget resolution bill, it now goes back to the House to get a new vote that includes the changes. If it passes there, the Senate would likely wait until after former President Donald Trump's second impeachment trial to vote on a final bill. A California boy battling a rare COVID complication is out of the hospital and back at home. Now his parents are warning others about the inflammatory disease that showed up weeks after they thought the family was over COVID. Jasmine Veal has the eye-opening report. This is eight-year-old Anthony Rodriguez Jr. getting a warm welcome home in Beaumont after fighting for his life in the ICU at Loma Linda University Children's Hospital against a rare illness associated with COVID-19 called MISC. Do you think if you hadn't rushed your son to the hospital when you did, he would have died? He, yeah, and that's, that's the hardest thing to say is if we did not take him that day, we don't know if he would have woke up the next day. His father, Anthony Rodriguez, says they all had COVID in early December with mild symptoms and recovered, including his son. But about five weeks later, Anthony Jr. suddenly came down with a fever. He started having like bloodshot eyes, cracked lips, um, a little bit vomiting. After about a week, when they thought Anthony was getting better, his wife happened to come across the symptoms of MISC. She read about a Miss C. 
And so we just both got this bad feeling. Even though he was getting better, he, was, he, um, he was, just has bad feeling. We rushed him to the hospital. Um, they did tell us he did have, he was suffering from septic shock and he was having heart failure. His parents say Anthony has no underlying conditions. He went through days of different treatments at the hospital until one finally worked. Doctors say even the symptoms can vary in this rare inflammatory condition. We're seeing fever that lasts for several days, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach aches, skin rashes, feeling tired. Uh, fast heartbeat, red eyes, swelling. North Hollywood pediatrician Dr. Joel Warsh, who was not involved in treating Anthony, says parents have called him very worried about what to look for. He says it's still unclear why some kids get this illness and others don't. Welcome Hi, home, dude. Yeah, welcome. Rodriguez says he believes sharing his story could help save a child suffering from MISC. You don't have to go through what we went through. And that was Jasmine Bale reporting. Thankfully, Anthony is expected to make a full recovery. The White House says it could send a mask to every American to encourage people to mask up. President Biden's chief of staff says the mask would come from a federal stockpile. The White House could make a decision on mailing masks in a matter of days. For the past year, Arizonans changed their daily lives to slow the spread of the virus and to prevent overwhelming hospitals. But was it enough? That's what 12 News investigated in our series, Crisis in Care. You can watch it right now on YouTube. New at noon, the latest numbers about unemployment in the U.S. show job growth, but also point to a weakening U.S. economy. Employers added 49,000 jobs last month, according to the Labor Department, but those hires followed 227,000 jobs cut in December. The unemploy unemployment, that is, rate fell slightly in January. And that comes with a drop in the number of people who are working or looking for a job, a sign some people are dropping out of the workforce. A new bill banning pregnancy discrimination in the workplace in Arizona gains the governor's signature. Lawmakers say it's an important step in protecting women at work. Team 12's Jen Wald joins us now with the details. Yeah, the passing of House Bill 2045 protecting women in Arizona so they don't have to make the choice between being a mom and having their career. Now, Governor Ducey announcing his signature on Twitter, making it into a law. The Arizona Attorney General's office says the bill passed in both the state House and Senate with near unanimous support. Its passage protects women at work who are pregnant, go through childbirth or other related medical conditions, and it enforces equal treatment of those women and their colleagues. Arizona is now the 28th state to put a law like this into place, according to the state's AG's office. It adds pregnancy discrimination to the state's Civil Rights Act, and it gives the state enforcement of that law. Now, prior to this bill's signing, there were pregnancy discrimination protections at the federal level, but not at our state level. And before House Bill 2045 was passed, the state had to send pregnancy discrimination complaints to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission for for investigation. Now, the Attorney General's office says that put women facing possible discrimination just kind of slowed down the process there, putting them in a tough spot as they risked a delay in justice. For now, we're in Phoenix, Jen Wall, 12 News. Jen, thank you. Round two of the People's Open is happening today. It's also known as Cut Down Day. The golfers all hoping to stay alive and make it to the weekend, but only the top 50 and ties will. You're going to see live coverage right here on 12 News, first at four. The Super Bowl halftime show is usually an extravagant affair, something we all look forward to, right? So how much do headliners actually make for their big performances? Let's connect the dots. The short answer is nothing. The NFL does not pay performers for the Super Bowl halftime show, but it's not like the organization doesn't pay up. It covers all the other expenses related to the extravaganza. That means paying stagehands and band dues, plus the production costs. And when some shows involve fireworks, choreographed drones, and trapeze equipment, it can add up. 
According to the Wall Street Journal, some halftime productions have cost the NFL more than $10 million. And don't feel too bad for the big name stars missing out on a paycheck. It turns out they usually cash in in other ways. Headlining such a high profile event sends sales and streams soaring for musical acts. After the 2017 halftime show, Lady Gaga's sales and streams went up more than a thousand percent the next day. According to Billboard, Jennifer Lopez and Shakira saw their song catalog sales went up nearly 900 percent after last year's Super Bowl. You can expect The weekend to see similar growth after this year's performance, but he could net more than just sales and streams. According to industry experts, a halftime appearance could raise his profile for years to come, since Super Bowl performers are often tapped for other big events after the big game. So, we will probably see a lot more of The weekend even after this weekend. So looking forward to that. All right, well, turning now to your daily juice, a Houston furniture store owner is placing one of the largest Super Bowl bets of all time. Jim Mickingvale is known as Mattress Mac. Sports gambling website, The Action Network, says he's putting down more than $3.4 million on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's a two-part bet with a point spread of plus three and a half. The Action Network reports it's the highest Super Bowl wager this year and just shy of the highest ever. Mattress Mac also bet against the Chiefs last year, and well, that didn't turn out for him so well. What would you do if a package showed up at your doorstep, but it wasn't addressed to you? When that happened to a man in Fresno, he turned to TikTok for help, and after millions of views, the plan worked. Scott Trujillo says the package was meant for a woman who lives just 10 minutes away from him. Her niece, who lives in New Mexico, saw the TikTok and actually helped make a connection to hand off the package.